Around 200 years ago, there was a parish priest who was serving in a small rural village in France. Every once in a while, he would lose his chain of thought during a sermon that he had tried to memorize, or he, he, other times he would fail to project his voice because, of course, there were no microphones in existence at, at that time. But at some of these times, he would simply point to, t- to the tabernacle and say with emotion, he is there, he is there, he would say. Of course, this priest was in John Vianney, the patron saint of parish priests. He knew that above all that he could say to his people, the most important thing for them to realize was that Jesus was there among them, that Jesus was truly present with them in the Eucharist. And this is precisely what we are acknowledging today as we celebrate the Feast of Corpus Christi. What we are acknowledging is that after the consecration at every Mass, when the Holy Spirit is called down upon the gifts, the bread and wine that we offer is converted into the body and blood of Jesus Christ. We believe that the principal property that makes something bread and wine has been transformed into that unique property of Christ. So while the physical appearances of bread and wine remain after the consecration, our faith tells us that they have become truly, really, and substantially the body and blood of Christ. Hence, the Eucharist is not just simply a symbol to us. When we receive the Eucharist, we receive the Lord himself. And Jesus affirms this fact in today's gospel that we've just heard when he tells the crowd that his flesh is actually real food and his blood is real drink. Therefore, what Jesus wants to communicate to us is that he is truly present in the Eucharist, not just in a symbolic way, but in the fullest sense. That is, he is wholly and entirely present to us in the Eucharist. So this Eucharistic presence, what it does is it it, it shows us that Christ has fulfilled his promise, his promise that he would remain with us until the end of time. In this way, Jesus constantly reminds us of his love for us because he who suffered on the cross for us 2,000 years ago is also the same person who offers himself for us now in the Eucharist. He continues to give of himself to us as the living bread in order that we may have life. Now, since Jesus is truly present to us in the Eucharist as real food and real drink, he can actually give us the spiritual nourishment that we need on our journey to eternal life. As he says in today's gospel, the body and blood that he gives is far more superior than the manna that the Israelites received when they were wandering through through the wilderness towards the promised land. That manna, which was spoken about in today's first reading, that was given to the Israelites to eat, was only to satisfy their temporary hunger. But the food and drink that comes from Christ feeds us all the way to eternal life with him. So then, what does this mean? What does it mean for us to receive Christ in the Eucharist? Well, to receive the body and blood of Christ is to unite ourselves to him in a very special bond. As St. Paul tells us in today's second reading, the bread and the cup that we bless is the communion with the body and blood of Christ. And by uniting ourselves to Christ in in the Eucharist, we are also united to each other because we share from the one body and blood of Christ. Hence, whenever we receive the Eucharist, we come into communion with the divine life of Christ and are united as the people of God. Now, unfortunately, at this time, not everyone can physically gather to share in the Eucharist But those participating online should know 
that you are also united with us by your desire to receive Christ, that you are united with us in this sharing of the Eucharist. Because in the end, the Eucharist gives us a taste of the perfect communion of the eternal life of happiness that we all seek throughout this life. Now, since the Eucharist is the real body and blood of Christ that nourishes us for eternal life, then how we approach this sacrament is also going to be very important. We can ask ourselves if we truly try to prepare our minds and hearts before receiving the Lord. Do we acknowledge His presence among us as we receive Him? And do we give thanks afterwards for the, this special treasure that we have received? If our Lord has come among us, then surely we should also respond in a most reverent manner that is worthy of such a Lord, such a precious person. So as we celebrate today the feast of Corpus Christi, let's ask God for a further increase in faith and charity in order that we may firstly recognize and acknowledge his presence among us in the Eucharist, but then also to respond to him in love as we ought to to this special gift and special Lord that we have in the Eucharist.